Let's talk about the CONCACAF Champions League, fellas, because Charlie alluded to it a little bit earlier. Club Leon came up to LA with a 2-1 lead for the second leg of the CONCACAF Champions League final and left with a 1-0 win, which gave them a 3-1 win overall. The first time they've ever won the CONCACAF Champions League, so congratulations to them. But a little disappointed from LAFC, Chuck? Are you? Are uh, you... Yeah, again, yeah. Um, I'm disappointed in, in Stevie Torondolo's tactics. Wow. Uh, you don't and like being down one nil and uh, or down two one, down a goal and and playing like you were uh, trying to hold on to the two one, the seven in the back. It, it, I can I could not believe that I saw Chiellini on the pitch. I could not believe it. I, I I know what he's done in his past and his experience, but he absolutely was the reason why. Because now you're playing with a back three and. They said we're going to test your space in behind uh, Palencia, who who's, who's getting up and down, and Palacios, who's getting up and down. We're right there, and we're gonna we're gonna test your center backs in their pace, in particular Long and Chiellini. And they just they just sat in those spaces, mm -hmm. it, and it, it it was so. I mean, Davila had a, an incredible first half, and it just felt like okay, maybe if Bowanga finishes that chance within the first two minutes of the game, the cross. That uh, yeah, he misses, he whiffed that it. Palacios gives that he whiffs, mm -hmm. but Bogush over Opoku, I could not, I couldn't for the life of me understand that because Opoku's been one of their best players, and and, and you it, you're at home, go go for the win. It felt like it was this was like a yeah, but they also game. had they had Elia and and um, uh, I, Acosta two holding too. defensive minded players like yeah, Elia obviously yeah. can control the flow, but like that's seven that's seven guys before you even get into your attack to have, again, you talk about the red thread between the team that can connect those lines. I, I and, and Carlos Vela didn't show up either. And no. granted they made the game. Uh, they kept the game pretty much in front of them uh, the entire time. And just like Uruguay, they were down to fight. They were down to scrap. They were going to kick you anytime you came through. You had, you had Kellen Acosta and, uh, and Ilya two, just two, between the back line and the three attackers who were sitting like three forwards, you had two marking like four, five players. Yeah, it was impossible. impossible. And and I, I thought, okay, you know, make the change within the first half because I was really curious to see if uh, Toronto would say, just like Deschamps did in the World Cup, at 30 minutes, I can see I got this wrong. Time to make some changes. He waited till half and he made some changes, but – not enough. The tactically made the right player selection changes, but it was too late. And 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 I was just disappointed because we all wanted an MLS side to win this competition. And to see LAFC how talented they are and deep to not get it right. I was it I was, felt like, I was extremely disappointed. I, well, they got run through in, in leg one in Mexico. They got run through. Yes, they gave they us did. so many, oh, yeah. so many chances. They were lucky. Even they said it. They were so lucky to come yeah, out to, with that to walk out of there the with a two-one. And, and you could feel that Leon had all the confidence. Like we're not worried about these guys. All we need to do is get one and be steady and and attack the spaces when they present themselves. And it felt like Torrento put out a, a lineup that just matched their formation. Like that was one of the ways they were going to solve it. Cool. You're going to go three in the back, which is actually more of a five in the back with with excuse me two midfielders and and three guys up top sure we'll do the same exact thing and we think that our guys are better than yours and we're at home we're gonna have the fans so on and so forth and it didn't work to your point chuck and it was a little disappointing because you want to see them stay kind of true to themselves in those moments and you also need your biggest players to show up wonga a month ago two months ago doesn't miss that sitter you know it, he doesn't whiff it completely carlos vela might have been in a different form he didn't he didn't show up i mean that's why you pay those guys to show up in the biggest moments and they didn't show up just to add this too how do they still have McCarthy as as your goalie? How, you, oh, that he, I mean, he, he McCarthy he is, 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 is great as yeah, great, great, great as he was in the penalties, and and I play with the guy; he's a great kid. But as a starting goalie in the CCL final, you are you are bound. I know he made you have some a great saves in leg yeah. one. To be fair, yes, to him. but it's bound to catch up with you. Yeah, it was bound to catch up with you. Well, Cripo, Cripo's not back yet, and obviously that's the hardest part. And I feel like it's actually been the Achilles heel of this LAFC team has been they've gone through like 20 goalkeepers in their short history mm -hmm. of just trying to figure out who's who's the one, right? Cripo is really good for this team because he's great with the ball at his feet. He's comfortable. He can make big saves. And then obviously losing him, again, the heroics of the final, I get all that from McCarthy. But again, we're six months in. We're almost halfway point of, of the season. The hard part is, you know, found yourself in the biggest game without, you know, 
one of your biggest strengths being a goalkeeper, which you need uh, in a game like that. Like you said, Charlie, it's just a matter of time. You can't expect McCarthy has never proven to be that guy that can do that. Right? Never, big, never. Big goalkeeper, um, which, you know, it's only in retrospect that you get a chance to realize that, you know. Okay, pitch, okay so let's finish, let's finish this part of the conversation with Chirondolo's quotes after the game, mm -hmm. and then we'll talk about US Open Cup here. He said, uh, we got beat by a very good team. I think if you look at the 180 minutes we played, they deserve to win. So hats off to them and congratulations. They had the right answers over two matches and we came up short. Okay, fair. Uh, then the next thing he said is, in tournaments like this, if you want to consistently compete in finals and win these, you're going to have to rethink your roster rules and regulations. You're at a big oh, disadvantage. Yeah. Oh. There's a little more money on that side of the table. He's referencing the Mexican teams. And money in this game buys quality. Steve Trendelow, quote. Well, he did, he did say, and uh, he did say when I, I talked to him some time back, that you get punished in Major League Soccer for being the best, right? Because if you want to keep the core of your squad and improve it a little bit, you quickly run out of money. There's mechanisms to build a team, but there's not mechanisms to keep. There are mechanisms to keep a team, but it's really hard when you have people that have overperformed their contracts, plus the players that you brought in to help you win, mm -hmm. to improve that. It's really hard to keep that bulk together and add one or two pieces. And he said, he said well, to I'll me, add, this I'll is add, a league that okay. you, you lose, you, you, you get punished for being the best um, because of parody. It's, okay, it's so time. So to, it's time to open it up. If, t if people are paying $500 million to get a franchise like San Diego, then I think it's time to say, all right, from three DPs, let's go at least to five and open up that the, from, from five to 15. Let's open it up a little bit more. Yeah. Okay, so he also had one more quote, and then Chuck, I want to hear from you on this. With our scheduling and all the competitions this year, we had a lot going on, and we ended up in the final not in our best moment. Having deeper rosters and more quality players in your team will allow you to extend those periods of play, and every MLS team is at a disadvantage there. Jimmy, same quote from the 7v7s, Chuck. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> Same quote from Jimmy. Just like, had I known, I'd gone a little bit deeper. You know, the way the roster, the way the rosters work in the seven v seven, just don't allow me to really, you know. That's uh, I, well, that I'm trying was to keep hundred grand, not get, take fifty grand. You know what I that's mean? That's true. That's true. <laughs> Something to keep in mind moving forward. But yeah, it's, there are some similar themes uh, happening in both competitions, though I didn't take advantage of uh, some of the roster rules uh, in the way that I think. What's interesting though, Chuck, is that LAFC is a team that spends a lot of money already, right? They're, they are being active. Oh, they, they are trying to they try every, They pull every lever possible. Oh, yeah. Somehow they got <laughs> Gareth Bale and Chiellini on their team last year. Thorrington is like... Yeah, he's a mastermind. A mastermind <laughs> yeah. of this. So if they're if they're saying this, we're at a disadvantage, what does that mean for everybody else in the league? Oof. I don't know. That's what I would add to that. All right. Well, that's a big, that's a big conversation. There's a lot to unpack there. What are you but saying we'll if you're playing for RSL? Yeah, you're like, uh, well, I'd be like, why aren't we playing Diego Luna? That's what hey, I Hey, RSL will spend four million. Colorado only spent like a mil million, you know what I mean? Like, uh, you're looking player. around the locker room. Well, because right? they're saving oh, all their no. money for, <laughs> for Arsenal, the Cronky family. All right, <laughs> let's talk uh, U.S. Open Cup preview for the quarterfinals. Want to get some predictions from you guys. There's two games on the Golasso channel. It'll be Chicago versus the Houston Dynamo. That'll be Tuesday at 8.30 p.m. Eastern. So make sure you guys tune in for that. We're down to the Elite Eight, as it were. And then we have... One of the two remaining USL teams, and it'll be Birmingham Legion taking on the Phil Neville list Inter Miami. He just got sacked recently. That game will be on Wednesday at 8 p.m. Eastern. Obviously, these all eight of these teams are now a couple steps away from winning a trophy and uh, getting an automatic berth to the 2024 CONCACAF Champions League. So there's a lot at stake here. Mm -hmm. But let's start with uh, well, let's start with another game that isn't on. It's Cincinnati versus the Pittsburgh Riverhounds. Cincinnati have been pretty good lately, and mm -hmm. Pat Noonan's won this competition a few times with the New England Revolution and the Seattle Sounders. So he knows what it means and what's at stake. It seems like they're taking it pretty serious. And they're one of our favorites, Heath. I think you picked them to win it all as well. Are we all? What are we yeah, doing on this? No, Heath picked the Birmingham Legion to win it all. Mm -hmm. That's right. That's true. That's <laughs> I, I, I respect that. But they're taking on the Riverhounds. Yeah. Who, who, listen, Pittsburgh have taken down two MLS teams so far. And uh, they took down New England in New England 1-0, and they beat the crew at home in the last round 1-0. So they got to be feeling pretty good about oh, the, themselves. The, but it the looks tough, like Dequa, the top score in USL, might not be available for them. The tough one is the fire Dynamo. I, anyone could win that one. That, yeah, man, that, man, that, that one falling apart oof. recently. Yeah, uh, I'm, I'm going to go Galaxy at this point. Galaxy, fire. And then Cincy, they're, they're winning. They're going for the win at this point. Cincy Legion. Mm. Hmm. I I I, okay. I do I still I still have that. I mean, I'm starting to wonder. 
I mean, the Galaxy just the Galaxy re- remind me of the the 2021 season of LAFC where you just you look on paper and you're like, dude, okay, today's the day they're going to open the floodgates. And then each game you're like, they're not opening those floodgates. Those floodgates are locked shut. Uh, so I'm worried about them, but I, I continue to uh, wonder if they can break out. But I'm I'm still going to Houston Dynamo and C- Cincinnati in my final. But I, I agree with Charlie. I didn't believe in it before. I thought Charlie picked Birmingham just because he's you know shout out Jay Heaps and and uh, you know the the, the legacy folks uh, in Charlie's lives. But uh, I could see that being uh, I could see I could see that being one. So C- Cincinnati Birmingham. And then uh, I'm saying Galaxy again. Chicago Fire is hard, man. But I'm gonna go with Dynamo. Uh, well, they played at Bridgeview. Even, gotten, think, even yeah, even Bridgeview. That's why you know they're gonna win when they play at Bridgeview. The guys, Soldier Field. Anybody who travels to Bridgeview is like, get me out of here. Right? <laughs> I'm, I'm not trying to be here. So it's just like whenever one anyone came to play at Gillette Stadium, it's like I don't want to play on turf. When they come in with that negative perception, you know it's a wrap. You're gonna dominate the game, and typically. The fire do so well at Bridgeview because no one wants to play there. I'm going All Houston right. in that one. I'm going Houston. I'm oh wow! Even though they've Houston given up like nine, talk you into up like, it. yeah, but they've given up like nine. <laughs> Houston have given up like nine goals in the last couple of weeks. Uh, uh, so they're they're a little leaky for a team right. that's supposed to be one of the best defenses. Uh,